Well, good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in noisy California. Um, I'm trying out this lapel mic, so we'll see if this does any better than uh, me yelling at the camera. It's noisy in here, so we'll see how we do. Um, this week's video, rather than me, you know, you just stare at my ugly face and have me talk about things, I thought I'd actually show you something. So um, I've been talking about the the edge firewall and the segmentation firewall. I thought I'd just kind of walk you guys what those are and what they look like. I've done it before, but they're both in production now and they're all wired up the way they're supposed to be. So uh, let's take a look at what we got here. So what we have is, uh, let's see if I can do this. There we go. So what we have is uh, two different firewall models here. This is a 3260 here on the bottom. This is from, from here down. This is our uh, internet edge firewall. And over here we have uh, the purple cables here. We got a uh, management connection. Which one is management? Yeah, this one's management here. It's our management. And we have a high availability cable. That actually gets connected to the other firewall. And the way we do that is we just wire it into a copper switch there at the bottom of the rack. It's buried down there. Uh, wire that into a copper switch and put it on a layer 2 VLAN that we've extended down to the MDF where, the, where its mate is. And then we plug that cable, another copper cable into that same VLAN, plug it into here. Um, it's the high availability, high availability interface. This is where it like exchanges its heartbeat data. Um, so that it knows the other firewall is there. If the uh, peer detects that the, uh, the, uh, the the backup firewall detects that this one is not operating, then it will take over as a master. Um, let's see what we else. We also have, so that's high availability A high, and high availability B. Sorry, I'm tongue-tied. And uh, we put two of them in there. We put, we put this one through a second set of switches and a second VLAN so that if something, say, were to happen to this switch, but the firewall is still running, um, this guy can get through another, a different switch and uh, it won't fail over the firewall because, you know, switches fail from time to time. So that's why we have two high, high availability connectors. Oh, uh, let's see, what do we got? Okay, so now... We have four fiber connections here. Two of them go to our inside switch, two of them go to our outside switch. Um, and they are uh, teamed together, trunked, however you want to put that, lagged. So yeah, these two are operating as an aggregate link. These two are operating as an aggregate link. One goes to the inside, one goes to the outside. And then we're tagging VLANs over that for our inside, outside, uh, DMZ, um, just the various uh, guest network gets put in here and it's, that's tagged as well. So these are our main uh, connections for data to the firewalls through these, these uh, fiber optics here. Uh, we have one um, copper connection here. This is a, a, a second, <laughs> actually I guess you could say it is a third high availability connection. And all this does is uh, keep uh, state information, so like session information, things like that, um, keeps this synchronized between the two firewalls so that if they fa fail over, um, people's sessions won't die and have to be reestablished. Um, so it just keeps updating that all the time. Now over here, we got something really funky. These two interfaces here on the end, these two interfaces here next to it, are basically a tap. It's, it's a tap between the wire. So uh, Palo Alto calls it V-wire. So we uh, coming from a switch, just any switch, we've got a VLAN from a switch, comes in here, goes out there, and then goes into a firewall. This is our Cerner connection. So it actually comes straight from our core in here, out here and then up here to this the Cerner stuff Cerner firewall and we did that because we didn't want early on we didn't want to have to 
put another layer three connection in between us and Cerner because it was just easier to do it with the V-wire. Now it's become more difficult to explain to other people what a V-wire is and how it operates than it is to actually have it. So we're actually going to put a layer three interface. We're going to move it from our, our core switch to this firewall and that'll negate the need for these things. We've got one for Cerner and one for UC Davis. And uh, we're gonna do that for both of those connections. So that is the uh, internet firewall, our edge firewall. Right above it is the segmentation firewall. And basically it's gonna be the same thing. We've got a uh, management interface over here. There we go. Management, high availability one, high availability two. This is our main connections in from uh, uh, from our core switch environment. So the way we've got it right now is we've got, I don't know, five VRFs or so, virtual routers within our core switch. And for those virtual routers to communicate with each other, they've got their default gateway pointing to this. So to get, say, from the VRF, the virtual router where all the user VLANs are to where all the server VLANs are. It has to come here, go through the firewall, and then it gets routed into the, uh, the server uh, VRF. And that way we can do inspections and look for malware and all that kind of stuff and allow only the traffic that needs to be moving that way. Um, right now, while, while we're just trying to figure out what traffic is actually moving, We've got a any any rule that just allows any traffic to pass. So, so again, the fiber are the main data connections. Each one of these, I believe, is I think we set this up as a 10 gig. So, there you go. And again, once again over here, this is the state information. Uh, we've actually got a problem with this one. It's connected to the switch up there, but we have no link light. So, that's one of the things I'm going to have to uh, try to troubleshoot. So, well, we do have a link light, but there's no connection. Sorry, there's a link light. Uh, but yeah, no connection. So anyway, when I talk about the core switch, these these come up here to these guys right here. That's our that's core switch one. And we got a core switch two over here in the other rack. Um, so wait, back to the first, uh, the internet firewall, the way we have this connected, it's, it's kind of cross-connected. So one of those fiber connections will come up here to this firewall. Another one of those fiber connections, the yellow, gets routed down to uh, the MDF to core switch three, which is down there. So this guy's fiber connections, it's uh, spanned across the, these, these two core switches. So one fiber link will come here. One fiber link will go down there, and then we span those two connections to make a, a aggregate link or a trunk or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, there you go. Um, that's how our firewalls are cabled up, and that's what they look like. Um, we're largely done with this project. There's just one more cleanup we have to do. Um, let's see if I can hold this in a way that I'm not going to affect the recording here. Let me do it this way. Sorry about that. Don't get dizzy. Um, so right now, the way all of our uh, subnets are set up, it's um, through VRRP. So we have a, a layer three instance on this switch, a layer three instance on this switch, and then two more down in the basement. So each VRRP instance is tied to four IP addresses, one here, one there, two more down in the basement, and any one of those can be the VRRP master. What we're gonna do to simplify things and to simplify routing a little because we gotta maintain the VRFs on all four of those. When we make a change, we gotta make a change on all four of these four switches. So what uh, Extreme is planning on doing is removing the layer three from core switch two, which is over there, and core switch four, which is in the basement, and course, which one and three will be the only ones that have uh, any sort of, what am I trying to say? Uh, layer three, sorry, it's early. So layer three will just be on two of the switches and VRFs will just be on two of the switches. So 
that that's going to give us enough. We don't need it on four. It's going to be too confusing to train the next guy. So um, I don't want to make it too difficult. So that's what we got planned coming up. Oh, one other thing. So you remember me talking about a firewall failover problem. The edge firewall, when we fail it over, we lose connection to Cerner. And we're figuring it has something to do with the V-wires. Well, it kind of did. Um, when we did the last bout of work, the last thing we did was do a failover of the, the edge firewall, dropped connection to Cerner. But this time, we, with an extreme engineer on site, we gathered all the data they needed, everything they wanted, and uh, sent it all back to them. Uh, they crunched the numbers and had a meeting last week, which I was on vacation last week, so I wasn't here for the meeting. But um, the short, short story is uh, they found a spanning tree problem. We've got spanning tree misconfigured on uh, either the top of rack switch here or more likely the top of rack switch down in the basement. So in about an hour and a half, I've got a meeting with them, and we're going to talk about the, the fix and how to implement the fix, and uh, we'll just go from there. And uh, I'll, I'll give you guys an update on what we found out there. So anyway, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed a, just a quick look at our firewall cabling. And uh, I know some of you guys are really geeking out about that kind of stuff. And it's a lot more interesting than just hearing me talk. So there you go. If you like what you saw, click the subscribe button. Click the no notification bell. Uh, leave comments. Ask questions. Love reading the comments. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys all next time. God bless.